Good morning everyone. It's a real privilege for me to share with you Psalm 119, which is one of my favorite Psalms. Don't worry, I'm not going to read the whole the 176 verses, but I really encourage you to read it once, whenever you have time. Psalm 119 is a beautiful and moving tribute to the majesty, to the power, and to the truthfulness of the Word of God. Many Bible commentators believe that it was written by David. I love the Psalms, especially because I can identify with the many powerful emotions portrayed. Emotions such as fear, betrayal, guilt, shame, love, joy, and so on. David wrote many of the Psalms when he was running away and hiding from Saul. So, driven by jealousy, hunted David for many years trying to kill him. Throughout the highs and lows in his life, David found in God's word an anchor where his soul found rest and hope. David found in the Word of God the strength and the courage to face the adversities of life. In God's Word, David's spirit was revived time after time. I believe that God is using this difficult time of the coronavirus to prepare all of us for the harvest that is to come. Amen? Also, as we prepare ourselves to return to some kind of new normal life, I believe that God is calling us to return to intimacy with Him. He's calling us to return our hearts to His Word. God wants to imprint His Word and His truth in our hearts. And today, I would like to inspire us to come to God's words in two ways. First, come to God's words, to God's word with passion. First of all, let's go across the Atlantic to El Paso, Texas, where my wonderful son Marcelo and his beautiful wife Kelsey we read to us Psalm 119, verses 97 to 105. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Thank you, Marcelo and Kelsey. We love and we miss you. In verse 97, David declares his love and his passion for the word of God. David knew that it was the depths of God's statutes and commands burning in his heart that made him wiser than his enemies. He acknowledged that the revelation he found in God's law gave him more understanding than his teachers and his elders in verse 99 and 100. God's word protects us from the evil paths in verse 101. The Word of God is like a lamp, illuminating our steps as we walk in faith and obedience to God, as it is said beautifully in verse 105. Yes, God's Word is to be approached with passion. Passion is a powerful emotion. Fueled by passion, Great acts of love have been made throughout history. But the greatest act of love of all 
was the sacrifice made by Jesus on the cross. On the cross, Jesus proved the depth of his love for us as he offered himself as a sacrifice so our sins could be forgiven. He died and rose again so we could come, we could return home to our Heavenly Father. Verse 103 says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Jesus is the Word. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. John 1 14. As we meditate on the Word, we meet Jesus. Amen. Jesus welcomes us with open arms into a relationship with him. He delights in revealing himself to us as we meditate on his word. Jesus is the sweet honey we taste as we devour his word. I don't know what goals you want to achieve during these very difficult times we are living in, but one of my goals during lockdown is to spend more time reading and meditating on the Word of God. I chose the mornings to do it. I would get myself ready. I would get my Bible, pens, books, notebook, and anything else that would help me to understand God's Word more deeply. But I have to confess that during my devotional time, I have often find myself wandering somewhere else. I found myself worried about some dear Kurdish friends who lost relatives to COVID-19. I found myself disappointed that we, we couldn't visit my family in Brazil because our flight was cancelled. I found myself sad knowing that some friends have lost their jobs during this time. I found myself anxious not knowing when we will be able to see our children in America. I found myself deeply worried about the well-being of our families in Ireland, Brazil, America. The list of worries is long. Do you struggle with the same kind of thoughts? Do you struggle with the lack of concentration reading the Bible as well? Well, I didn't tell anybody including my dear Brazilian friend, Eloisa, about how distracted I became when I tried to meditate on God's word. But one day, Eloisa and I were praying on the phone and she shared a picture she had as we were praying together. She saw me sitting on a picnic rug in a beautiful green field. I was reading the Bible and a fly came and rested on my leg. I got distracted from the, word, the God, from the Word of God and stopped reading to swat the fly away. But it kept coming back. Eloisa told me not to allow myself to be distracted as I seek God. She had no idea how accurate her picture was until I told her about my struggles when I tried to meditate on God's Word. I knew immediately that God was speaking to me. He wanted me to be vigilant and not to allow anything to distract me from His Word. God treasures the time we spend with Him, so we should treasure and desire to spend quality time with Him as well. The second way we should come to God's Word is with courage. Let's go across the Atlantic once again, but this time to Las Vegas, where my eldest wonderful son Samuel, his beautiful wife Melina, and our wonderful granddaughter Liv, we read Psalm 119, verses 11 to 18. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. 
With my lips, I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Be good to your servant while I live, that I may obey your word. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. Okay, all done. Okay, Thank you, Sam, Melina, and Liv. We love and miss you. God knows that courage doesn't come to us naturally. Many times we walk through life in fear, but God's the one who imprints in our hearts the attribute of courage through his word. It's the word of God hidden in our hearts that give us courage to say no to sin when it knocks on our door, as verse 11 says. It's the word of God that fills our hearts with real joy in times of troubles, as it said in verse 12 to 16. We need courage to obey God's word and to see his wonders, verse 17 to 18. So let's make verse 18 a prayer every time we come to God's word. It says, Open my eyes that I may see the wonderful things in your law. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to show us the wonders in the Word of God. We need courage to read and apply God's law in our lives. His Word revives us. His Word keeps us, our hearts soft and humble towards God. We need God's courage so we can be a blessing to the world today. Because the world needs to know and to see that Christ in us is the hope of glory. I want to read 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 8. Some Gadites defected to David at his stronghold in the desert. They were brave warriors ready for battle and able to handle the shield and spear. Their faces were faces of lions and they were as swift as gazelles in the mountains. David was a great man of passion and courage who kept his heart soft and humble towards God. And David's great warriors were men trained for battle just like David. They were agile and their faces were like those of the lions. What an amazing description of those men. The lion's face is fearless, has courage, has strength, has confidence and has majesty. And this is how God sees you and me. Although we are weak, our faith in Jesus and his word imparts power, making us strong and courageous. Jesus makes us warriors with faces like lions, just like him. He is our great warrior. He is our great savior. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and we reflect his image in our faces of lion. Hallelujah. Let's allow the word of God to transform us into brave, courageous, bold Christians. Let's be courageous to pray for neighbors, for colleagues, for family. Let's be courageous to share the good news of salvation. Let's be courageous to go back to God and go back to our first love for Jesus. Many years ago, when I was living in Brazil, I went to a young man's prison with a team from the mission organization I was part of. We did some drama and afterwards, we went round the rooms in pairs talking to the young man. 
I started to talk to one young prisoner who was not much younger than myself. And I told him about the depth of love that Jesus had for him. Then he told me in tears that his mother was a believer and that she was praying for him every day. My heart was filled with God's love for that young man. And right there in the prison, he gave his heart, his life to Jesus. Yes, he was still in prison, but he was free. Amen. Then, as I was about to leave, God spoke to me and said, Regina, give him your Bible. Now, that Bible had more value to me than any gold. It had been given to me by the person who had led me to Jesus. It was my first Bible. I didn't want to give it away. It was so precious to me. But as I was fighting within myself, God spoke a second time and said, this young man will need this Bible more than you will. So I took out the photos of my children and family and gave my treasured Bible to the young man in obedience to God. Maybe we feel like we are living in a prison. Maybe fear, anxiety, disappointment, addictions, unbelief, worries, illness have kept us prisoners. But I believe that the Word of God has the power to set us free. Jesus is the Word. He sets us free. There is no fear in love because God is love. And today, God's calling us back to His Word. He's calling us back to our first love. He wants us back safe in His arms. Jesus loves us passionately, and we should love Him back passionately. Give your fears, your worries, your anxieties to Jesus. And if you don't know this Jesus and his love for you, today is the day he's calling you. And if you knew Jesus and turn your back to him, he's calling you as well, because he's calling the prodigals back home. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you renew the passion in our hearts for you and for your word. Help us to be brave, courageous, knowing that our strength comes from you. I pray that we will grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ for us. We want to experience this love and we want to be filled to the fullness of God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week.